Hello, third graders. Today, we are going to look at theme. And remember that there are synonyms that go along with the word theme. Think of moral, think of lesson. Um, sometimes we think of the word message um, or central message. So think of those types of words when you think of theme today, okay? All right, I know some of the smaller print is a little hard to read and or blurry, but look at the big letters, okay? Acceptance, honesty, respect, never give up, friendship, be responsible, kindness, compassion, and courage. So just take a little bit and just look at this a little bit more because I possibly might have been reading a little too fast for you, but look at those larger words that you can see. And then in the center, you can see a rectangle, and it says the moral, the message, or lesson of the story. Sometimes it's stated, meaning that it will actually tell you this is what it is. And sometimes it's implied, meaning that you're going to have to infer. And we've talked about inferring multiple times this year. All right, so as we look at the different slides together, and you're actually gonna be doing some on your own today, I want you to be thinking of these words throughout all these different slides, okay? Because these are the types of things that we're looking for. All right, the first one we're gonna be looking at, the title is called Legend of the Pineapple, and it's a Philippine folktale, okay? So you can follow along as I read it to you. Pina lived with her mother. Her mother, Rosa, worked hard farming and doing all the chores. However, her daughter, Pina, was lazy. It would not help her mother. One day, Rosa got very sick and could not stand up. She called to Pina, who was playing outside. She asked her to cook some porridge. Now, remember, porridge is very similar to oatmeal. Just put some rice and water in a pot, then mix it with a ladle. A ladle is a spoon. Rosa told Pina, but lazy Pina grumbly told her mother she couldn't find the ladle. Her sick mother looked for the ladle herself. She angrily told Pina, I wish you could have a thousand eyes so you'd find what you're looking for. The next day, Pina was nowhere to be found. But in their backyard, where her mother last saw her, a strange plant shaped like a head with a thousand eyes started growing. And that was the first pineapple. All right, think about what is the moral of the story? What is the lesson? What is the theme? What does the reader want us to take away after reading this? Okay, so in your head, I want you to be thinking A, B, C, D, and we are going to visually be crossing things off as we go through this. Okay, so A says, never make porridge without a ladle. Is that what the author wanted you to take away from this? Absolutely not. That had nothing to do with it. So we are going to cross off A. B, respect and obey your parents. Oh my gosh. We obviously need to do that in general anyway, but that's definitely what Pina needed to do in this. So I'm going to put my little dash or mark next to the letter B. C, pineapples have eyes. Nothing to do with this. So I'm automatically going to cross off C. And D, when your parent is sick, make porridge. Not everybody likes that. So that's definitely not going to be the theme or lesson or moral to this story. So I'm going to cross off D. And then visually, in my mind, I'm going back and I'm circling B. B is the right answer. Respect and obey your parents. All right, we are moving on to the next slide. The next one is called The Two Frogs, and it's a Japanese folktale. Follow along as I read it to you. Once there was a frog who lived in Oshka. There was another frog who lived in Kyoto. One day, it occurred to both of them to travel to another part of Japan they had not seen. The Oshka frog wanted to see Kyoto, and the Kyoto frog wanted to see Oshka. While they were traveling, they met each other on top of a mountain. 
They greeted each other and started talking about their journey. The Oshka frog said he wished there was a way to see Kyoto from where they stood. Then he would know it was worth continuing the journey. The Kyoto frog said he wished the same. They agreed to hold each other up to see the city they were each going to. But as they held each other up, the frogs, whose eyes were on the back of their heads, saw the city they both came from. The Oshka frog thought Kyoto was just like Oshka. The Kyoto frog thought Oshka was just like Kyoto. Oshka is just a copy of Kyoto, and Kyoto is just a copy of Oshka. It's not worth it to continue, they thought. So they decided to go back home to their respective cities. What is the moral of this story? So think, what does the author want us to take away from this, okay? So let's go ahead, and again, we're gonna do the same type of thing. We're going to visually be putting A, B, C, and D. The ones that we don't want, we're gonna be crossing off. The ones that might be a possibility, we're gonna be putting a mark next to, and then at the very end, after going through all of them, we will be circling our answer. A says, frogs are not great travelers. That absolutely has nothing to do with this, so we are going to cross off A. B says, frogs don't know where they're going. Well, whether that's true or not, that has nothing to do with this either. So we are gonna cross off B. C, what we see may not be reality. Hmm, okay. That could be definitely a possibility, so I'm going to put a mark next to it. And D, don't leave your hometown. Okay, that's definitely not it at all. So I'm going to put an X over top of that one. And the only possibility that it could have been, because A, B, and, and D were ridiculous answers, is C. So I'm going to go back and circle C. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, this one is titled Legend of the Dreamcatcher, and this is actually a Native American legend. Now keep in mind that the moral or the theme is not always going to be spelled out for you. You are going to have to be inferring at different times about this, okay? Because even though it might be about frogs or it might be about toads, that's not really what the message of the... Um, the message that the person is trying to get across from us or to us. All right, here we go. Follow along as I read it out loud to you. An old Lakota leader once dreamed that Ikoma, the great teacher of wisdom, was a spider. In his dream, Ikoma the spider spoke to him in a different language. Ikoma was also spinning a web in an elder's willow hoop that had been decorated with beads and feathers. The spider spoke about life cycles. He exclaimed how all humans begin as infants. Then we grow up to be adults and into old age, where we need to be taken care of like babies again. Ikoma also spoke about different forces that affect us. There are good and bad forces that change us. If we listen to the good forces, we are steered into the right direction. If we listen to the bad forces, then we go towards the wrong direction. After he finished spinning the web, he showed the finished product to the leader. The spider told him to hang this above their bed. All the good dreams and ideas will be caught in the web. The bad dreams and ideas will go through the hole. When the leader woke up, he taught his people how to make dream catchers. All right, the question, third grader says, what is the central message of the story? Hmm. I want you to go ahead and take a look by yourself and read A, B, C, and D. And I want you in your head to be crossing off the ones that are not the right answer and be putting a mark next to the possibilities, and then in your head be circling the one that you do think is the right answer. So go ahead and take some time to do that.
Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. A says spiders are tricksters. Now, whether the passage is about spiders or not, it's not going to be the central message. So we definitely should have crossed off A. So great job if you did that. B, we must not believe dreams. Now, yes, there was something about dreams in this passage, but that's definitely not what the author is trying to get across from us. So good job if you crossed off B because B is not correct. C, we must not let dreams affect our daily lives. That, eh, you maybe could have put a mark next to, but let's go ahead and look at D. We must try hard not to be affected by bad ideas and influences. That is much better than C. So C should have been crossed off and D is the correct answer. So good job if you crossed off A, B, and C and circled D. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next passage. This one is titled The Fox and the Crow. This is the last one that I'm going to be doing with you. The other four you will be doing on your own. All right, this is an Aesop's fable. Go ahead and follow along as I read it out loud to you. A fox was hunting for food when he saw a crow on a tree. It was just an ordinary crow, but what caught his attention was the cheese in the crow's beak. He thought it would be a delicious breakfast. He sat at the foot of the tree where the crow was sitting. What a beautiful crow, the fox said. Look how those feathers shine. If only I could hear its voice. Surely it would sound so sweet. She must be the queen of the birds. Hearing all those compliments and flattery, the crow opened her beak to sing. She did not want, oh, excuse me, she did want to be called the queen. As she opened her mouth, the cheese dropped straight into the fox's mouth. Thanks, crow, the fox said as he walked away. <laughs> what is the central message of the story? The whole time the fox wanted that cheese, didn't he? But again, that's not what it's about. Okay, so take some time. I want you to read through A, B, C, and D. Again, visually, cross off the ones that it's not, put a dash next to the possibilities, and then go back and circle the one that it absolutely is. So take some time to do that. All right, let's go ahead and look at A. A says, don't eat cheese for breakfast. That has nothing to do with it, so you should have crossed that one off. B, not everyone has your best interests at heart, so don't believe everything people tell you. Hmm, okay, that could be a possibility, so I'm going to put a dash next to it. C, don't sing when you have food in your mouth. Well, yeah, you shouldn't do that, but that has nothing to do with it. So we should have crossed C off, and D, some friends only want your cheese. That might be true, but that's definitely not the answer. So you should have crossed off D, okay? Those of you that had B for the correct answer, you are correct. B is the correct answer. All right, this is the time where you are going to need a piece of paper because you are going to be recording your answers for five, six, seven, and eight. And you'll need to write down A, B, C, and D. You'll need to write down number five next to the one that you do, number six, number seven, and number eight. Your name needs to be on it. And when you have finished, you will need to take a picture of it and post it on your portfolio in Class Dojo. Okay? Um, send me a message if you're not able to get in and I can send you the link. But otherwise, I think for the most part, you guys have been doing okay. Okay? So I'm going to give you a little bit of time to get your piece of paper, number, your piece of paper, five, then put A, B, C, D, 